Hello everyone, I'm your host, Mr. Lindley. Our top story today, graphing. Essential skill or unnecessary drawing? Graphs are something that is loved by both science and math teachers alike. But is this something that is essential to our understanding, or is it just something that they're forcing down all of our throats? For more on this, we go to our physics correspondent, Mr. Lindley. Hey, Fizz Kids! Another day, another video! It's me, Mr. Lindley, here to talk about graphing data in physics. Specifically, what do we do with that data once we have our hands on it? But first, a word from our sponsors. Pencils. Chopsticks you can write with. Pencils. Available in a store near you. Now, our first topic to discuss is graph types or graph styles. If you go into a graphing program, something like Google Sheets, you'll find a ton of different options. So let's go through a couple of them. The first one uh, that we have looks like this, and we call this a bar graph typically. And this graph is fantastic if you're trying to talk about who loves strawberry and vanilla ice cream. Ooh, I like Rocky Road, right? Chocolate chip's a personal favorite of mine. But this is eh, not gonna work for us. Another graph we have is actually called a column graph. And if you just take your face and go like, Ooh, like this, uh, that's the same as a bar graph. So that's gonna be a big N-O from me there, pal. Our next graph, although it might look delicious and we all know we want that teal slice, right? This is uh, not the graph that we would be using. This next graph is known as an area graph. And although this graph might look like you can just climb it towards success, <laughs> get it? Cause it looks like stairs. Not a good graph for us. Now, oh, what is that a line graph? That looks not good. The problem with a, a line graph is we have connected points there, right? And connect the dots was a really fun game for me when I was a little kid. I didn't even know it was a sailboat until I connected all the dots. But for us, what we want to do is I want to let the data speak to me. I don't want to force my opinions onto the data before I've even done anything to it. I just want to have the raw data in a graph visual format. So, oh, is that a scatter plot? Ding, 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 we have our winner. And I know what you're asking. Is that a check mark made out of lightning bolts? <laughs> you bet there is. Only because Google Slides does not have a check mark built into it. But that one's, I don't know, I kind of like it. Now, this is our, our standard graph, right? Our coordinate axes. And we have these different four quadrants. Now, for the most part, we're only going to be using a part of this because we don't have a lot of negative values that we typically deal with because we're going to assign things positive values to make our lives a little bit easier. And that's really a lot of our choice. So what that means is these two quadrants, bye-bye, we're very rarely going to use them. Although sometimes we might use these, it's also very rare that we would use that fourth quadrant as well. We're really sticking right here in this main spot. This is really our, our home that we're sort of living in with, with this uh, first quadrant. Now, what do, we, what do we call these? Some of you may want to be tempted to call these letters, right? But realistically, they have names, and we should call them by their name. This is the horizontal axis, so we should call it the horizontal axis because that is its name. This is the vertical axis which is its name. So it's what we, and I, and I know what you're saying, why? And I'm saying, because that's its name. So that's why we would, we would call it that. I don't know why you're saying why, but like, that's, that, that's the reason we're going to call it vertical access. Then right here, we have something commonly referred to as the origin of the graph. Um, so that's our just a little, a little naming um, that we have. So we can sort of go a little bit deeper dive now. now. There are some terms that we use in science a lot, and they are the independent variable and the dependent variable. Now, I have no issue with these as terms because they are quite important to us as scientists, but I do have an issue with them in terms of graphing. So let's go first what they mean. The dependent variable depends <laughs> on the independent variable. Typically, if you are performing an experiment, you are personally modifying the independent variable and the dependent variable is changing because of that. That's normally the way it works. Now, there are some people who believe that one of these belongs on a certain axis and the other one on the other axis. And I'm here to tell you, that's not true. Uh, what matters for us is that we analyze the data appropriately regardless of which uh, is on which axis. So it doesn't really matter for us. Now, is it advantageous to put one on a, the certain axis? It really depends on the experiment and the value. So for instance, for us, we always want time uh, 
almost always, except really one case, on that horizontal axis that makes the analysis for us a heck of a lot easier. Now this, a lot of you are probably familiar with the equation of a line, so let's go through what these pieces actually are. So y is the vertical variable, or what's actually plotted on the vertical axis. Then we, uh, so that would be right there, right? We next up, we have x, which is the horizontal variable, and that's what's actually plotted on the horizontal axis. And then we have the slope and vertical intercept. B for vertical intercept. I know M for slope also doesn't make sense. But if we were looking at a graph, right, the slope um, is sort of like how much it varies, how much it changes, how steep it is, is another way we can say that. And the vertical intercept would be uh, where it, it hits that, that axis. So let's go a little bit deeper. So vertical intercept, if we look at this graph, this is the graph of SAT score and points um, versus the number of science classes taken by a student in years. So if we look here, the vertical intercept should be right about there. That's where it cuts through and hits the axis. Now I want to try to read a number there and sort of get a value for this. And this is 500 points. Now 500 points could mean lots of things, but, but for our graphs, it should have a specific meaning for this graph, not a meaning for all of our graphs. Vertical intercept overall has a meaning for every graph ever, but for this, it should have a specific meaning because it's a specific graph. So what it's telling me is when the horizontal value is zero, when the horizontal variable is zero, what the vertical value is. So what this is telling me is if a student took no science classes, so zero years of science classes, they would score 500 points on the SAT. That's very important to get meaning out of these values. Next up, we have the slope of the line. Mmm, slope. Get it? Because M. It's, it's funny. It's funny. Uh, rise over run is, is how we would commonly refer to that. And we can sort of sometimes people draw these as little triangles to, to reference the steepness of this. One thing I will point out is if you notice my triangles are not drawn off of data points. We don't want the slope of data points, mainly because that can happen. We have to take the slope of line. Points can't uh, have slope. So we need actually the slope of the lines that are there. Now, if we want to get a little more technical than rise over run, which is a little generic, uh, we'd officially call this the vertical variable change divided by the horizontal variable change. And that's how we'd really find the slope. So if we were to look here at these numerical values and do a little division, we would end up getting 150 points per year. Now, by saying points per year, 150 points per year, I feel like it should have some meaning. The problem is if I just said to someone, hey, points per year, it's like, uh, okay. So what we want to do is we want to be able to speak the slopes in a way that it makes sense to other people. So now I'm going to teach you a little trick to speaking slope. It's pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to say a generic sentence every single time and just play fill in the blanks with it like Mad Lib style. So let's get our generic sentence. For every horizontal unit, the vertical variable increases slash decreases by slope value vertical units. All right, what does that even mean? So everything that's in parentheses, that's what's going to be swapped in and out. The increase and decrease, that's going to be chosen based off of whether or not the slope is positive or whether or not the slope is actually negative. So let's go back to our graph that we just had and let's try to fill this in. So for every horizontal unit, horizontal unit here looks like it to be years uh, of science classes. I'm going to make that specific so I know exactly what we're talking about. Uh, the vertical variable, which we know here is SAT score, because it's a positive slope value, we're going to go with increases by slope value, which is 150, and then the vertical units, which is finally points. So now if I read this, for every year of science classes, the SAT score increases by 150 points. That's a sentence that most people could understand and is a heck of a lot better for communication instead of 150 points per year. We do the same thing with every time we, we encounter slope to have an actual meaning and an actual understanding of it. Quick recap of things that we talked about. So we discussed how scatter plots are our number one graph because although we do love ice cream, we certainly don't graph that data. We talked about the horizontal and vertical axis and although we might be tempted to use letters, we're gonna avoid that and we're gonna actually use those names. We talked about how independent and dependent variable, although they are science terms, they don't actually have to be on one or the others of the axis. We can make that decision based on our graph and based on our data set. We talked about the equation of a line, good old y equals mx plus b. We talked about the vertical intercept and how that has meaning, and it tells me something like 
If the horizontal is nothing, what's going on with the vertical? We talked about the slope of a line, how to find that. And, and finally, we talked about speaking slope. Hope this was helpful. Hope you guys enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe. And until next time, I'm Mr. Lindley.